Good morning YouTube. It's day two on the recumbent build. It's early in the morning, it's bloody freezing. If it's a bit misty in here, that's because I've got the heater on and you're getting a bit of condensation on the lens. But uh, next bit of the project, I want to get the bottom bracket fixed to the front of the frame. So I'll show you. There's the front of the frame there. My bottom bracket shell, which is 40 mil. I've put it on as central as I think, and I've marked it with a sharpie. Now, next step is to clamp this frame back to the table so it's all nice and straight. That's the good thing about having a, a metal table, a welding table. You can clamp things to it and uh, you know that they're flat. Or relatively flat. Um, then it's just going to get the grinder with a flat wheel and start nibbling this away. Start grinding this both sides, try and get it as close as possible. Looks okay. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do here is make the weld look like it's been like fillet brazed. Well, that's the excuse I'm making. But the truth is, I am totally shit at welding. <laughs> I forgot how bad I was at welding. Oh my god. My wire feed is going rrr, 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 as well, which doesn't help, but I'm still shit. But it sticks, it will not come off. I've just got to clean it up. Any welders watching? Just turn off now. We'll have to lots of grinding and stuff. It's still terrible. This is a terrible weld, but it's not going anywhere. Ah, and it looks a bit nicer. <laughs> Well, the outer welds are terrible, but the inner weld, they're quite good actually. I'm happy with those. <sighs> Didn't have it turned up enough. Okay. I decided to weld everything up now because I wanted it nice and firm for when I do the front. Um, the heat from the welding has brought these in a bit. So I need to adjust, I need to find out which one is, well, how far out they are and adjust accordingly. A bit of minor adjustment needed on this one. Easy enough. Right. It's snowing! But we haven't got time for that. Uh, next thing is, make some mountain plates 
for this headstock tube. So I'm using CAD for this cardboard aided design. I'm going to need two plates like this, 40 mil hole. And I've just been to screw fix and bought myself a 40 mil hole cutter because this is 40 mil. Drill that out, shape two of these, one above the frame, one below the frame. Now the joy of this is I can tack weld one on there and that'll hold this at the height I want. Then I can um, G clamp it onto the main frame and by sliding them back and forth, back and forth, I can actually adjust the angle that the forks and the head stock are going to be. That's the joy of this build. Instead of guessing and trying to cut a frame in half and weld it on and get that angle right and then weld the boom on, it's all in one. I can adjust it to my heart's content just by moving these two plates and dial in the the rake and the trail and um, get it perfectly how I want it. So that's the next thing, make two of these plates. Okay, I'm gonna teach you about rake and trail. The rake is the angle of your forks adjacent to the frame and the trail is this gap here. Now the reason you can push a bike down a hill with nobody on it and it'll just freewheel until it runs out of steam it'll stay upright is because of the trail. Some bikes you can ride no handed easily at slow speeds because of the trail. Other bikes are a bit more twitchy. They've got less trail. So trail is this gap here. You see there's a line with my big roof in square. It goes from the center of the axle down to the floor and I've set up this pipe here perfectly in line with the steering tube, steerer tube down to the floor. The gap should be anywhere between one, two inches, somewhere around there. <coughs> and as you can see that is around two inches. So I think that is where I want my forks. That is the angle that I need. The pedal clears this couple of inches before it actually interferes with the front wheel. Plenty of wheel base, so that's good. Now the joy of this frame, this design is, when you've made these plates, you slot them either side and you G clamp them down. And then by sliding them back and forth, you can actually adjust the rake, the rake of the forks to your heart's content, you know, within a certain distance and dial in what you want. So I've been messing about with it for 20 minutes, moving them back and forth, getting them the right distance from there so that the pedal doesn't get anywhere near the front wheel. Fiddling about and clamping it as I go and now it's clamped in the right position. That is exactly what I want. You can see the tube in there as well. It's a bit off center at the moment, it needs to come farther over to that gap, but I'll do that on the table. 
So that's the joy of a twin spar frame. None of this, none of this cutting a boom, trying to get the right angles, welding it on, then trying to get the next piece welded in equally. It's pretty much automatically for you. That plate there, I just tack welded it on to lift it above the bearing race. And yeah, easy peasy relatively. But yeah, I've been messing about with it. I've got the angle I want. I can tack weld it on now and then I'll, uh, once I've done that, I'll have a sit on it and have a bounce around and see. But yeah, I wanted about two inches of trail and that's what I've got, so jobs are good. Un. That's that, too late now, it's all welded in. Two inches of travel is what it is. I've had to fill in these little holes that are in it. But. There you are. Loads of clearance for the pedal. My shed is a bloody mess. I've had enough for tonight. I'm going to clear up. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to go in, have a coffee, and I'll clear up tomorrow. And then think what I'm going to do next. Seat mounts, I think. I'll see you later. <laughs>